Hi everybody from John Cook. I'm the guy that used to run Madman Lighting. Today we are going to be building the Howling Wolf Narnjaquan Battle Cruiser. This is a resin and metal garage kit that was available, oh, maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Unlike most of you who are watching this video, mine's been sitting on the shelf for the past 10 years wondering, is anybody ever going to build this thing? Well, I got mine down, and so are you. We are going to start building the Narnjaquan Battle Cruiser together a little at a time. So here's the instructions. Turn the page. Here's the first page of instructions. The first thing you have to work on is the laser cannon assembly and the landing bay assembly. These go in the middle of the front fork of the ship. So I haven't done anything with this little bit of metal wire here yet. I'm going to save that for last. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to worry about taking the hangar bay and the hangar bay block and the laser cannon assembly and I'm going to clean them up as best as I can and fix all the little miscasting problems with them. So put this aside. Here is our laser cannon assembly. Here is our landing bay assembly. Here is the brick that goes at the end of the landing bay assembly. Lovely. So the first thing that the careful modeler will observe upon getting his kit out of the box is that his laser cannon assembly has lots of little pits and holes and gaps and problems with it. So I have spent a bunch of time fixing mine and you can see here at the end all this little bits of white stuff and dark gray stuff is putty that I have used to fill in gaps. And what I did was first I started re-sculpting some of this this line that goes around the back here this edge with my number 10 exacto blade just by gently chiseling and shaping and filling in with gray putty and then as i did so i found uh, little air bubbles just under the surface of the resin so in order to fix the air bubbles what i did was i got my pin vise and a small drill bit and i would drill out those air pockets widen them up to make them bigger at first which is what you need to do and then you just kind of go around and you find all the little air pockets and you drill them out and you make little cylinders out of them and then once you have them all drilled out you need to fill them back in and smooth them over the way that I did that was I used two things I used Tamiya gray putty for filling in all the larger areas and shallower holes and things that were fairly easy to kind of squeeze putty into and then for all the precision spots like the drilled out holes I use this perfect plastic putty this stuff is water based and it can be put into a syringe like this and squirted through this little metal tip into the tiny little holes that I made with the drill it can also be squirted into these little bitty cracks along here and squirted into little holes here with the syringe and because it's water based I can take these really nice Tamiya Q-tips this is a Q-tip by the way okay it's got a pointed tip and I get it wet with water and I come along while the putty is still wet and I just wipe it smooth and wipe it smooth and wipe it smooth okay and that's how you get your perfect plastic putty to be nice and smooth so after a while you get all your little gaps and cracks and holes filled in and it starts to look a lot better so that's that piece and I did that on this little block piece too you know this one's pretty simple it's just squares so you just go around and you fill in all the spots with the putty and you smooth them out now to the hard one okay this is the landing bay piece See, there's the open end for the landing bay and it's got all these rectangles on the top and the rectangles on the other end on the other side too now if you look close those are pretty lousy rectangles some are fatter than others they're not square they're not placed very well on the piece there's miscastings they stink so I said well you know what I could spend a lot of time puttying and scraping and filing and trying to make it better or I've been wanting to get 
back into Fusion 360, the free CAD tool from Autodesk that is free to use for hobby projects. And I've been wanting to use it with my 3D printer because Fusion 360 will print directly to my 3D printing software. So I can create a shape that is the same size as those rectangles in 3D and print them out. And there they are. There's a couple of them. I printed out a whole bunch of these things. With my micrometer, I measured those shapes on top of the battle cruiser uh, landing bay, drew them in Fusion 360, 3D printed them, and here they are. So that's pretty nifty. I got a whole bunch of these things. Now I need a way to get them onto this thing, and I want to do a better job than the original guy did. So I need an alignment jig. Here's the alignment jig. It uses the same shape, slightly enlarged, as the little rectangles. And then I put this rectangle, bigger rectangle around them all and space them appropriately and put this lump at the end so that I can just put this whole thing right on top of the landing bay and the lump at the end is my stop block. Look! It fits right on top of the landing bay and it lines up almost perfectly with the lousy ones and oh look I'll take a newly printed landing bay piece and look it fits in the hole perfectly now all I have to do is sand off all these lousy lumps these lousy rectangles with a nice flat piece of sandpaper sand them perfectly smooth There'll be no scratches or lumps or bumps or anything like that. Use my jig, put my piece, glue my pieces in, and I will have a perfectly corrected Narn Jaquan Battlecruiser a landing bay. That's awesome. So that's where we are with the Narn Jaquan Battlecruiser project. Stay tuned for more later on. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.